uh, with Lorenzo Stewart committing over the weekend and um, – and, of course, someone dropping off uh, what Jason Hall drops off, the kid from uh, the defensive back from Texas. I don't know. What do you, how do you view this commit list today differently than you did on Friday? I don't know how much I, I view it a little differently. I, I do think Nebraska they need, some, they need some people in the secondary. You look at the, the, the position right now, and it's obviously the strongest position on defense, but it's going to take a major hit off after this year. And so – you definitely need to try and get some young high school talent, some guys who are maybe a guy or two who are ready to play, you know, sooner than later. Uh, so in that case, Jason Hall hurts. But I look at Stewart and I, I compare him to actually a, somewhat of a Terrell Newby type. I know he's not quite as big as Newby, but we're not talking about 50 pounds here. We're talking about you know 15 pounds and maybe a couple inches. And I know uh, from various people that I've talked to that are close to the program that you know that's the way the coaching staff feels about him as well and and they just they want to continue to recruit speed on offense and we even see tweets from uh the coaching staff over the weekend when they announced the boom it's you know more and more speed more and more speed so um i i look at stewart and i think he'll kind of blend into to what they're trying to do on offense over the next couple of years and talking with josh harvey of fox sports next and big red report Let's go let's talk about uh, Monte Harrison here for a bit, the four-star wide receiver out of Lee Summit, Missouri. He commits to Nebraska. He's going to play football and baseball. What are the chances that baseball becomes kind of his sport more so than football? At the college level, or do you necessarily mean – or do you mean – I mean, at the college a, level. A not, I mean, as a possible draftee, a little bit. But also, I mean, at the college level, do you think he's a better baseball prospect than football prospect? Yeah, I do think he's a better baseball prospect, but at the same time, I don't want it to be confused. I, I, you know, he's not above a starling type, and a lot mm-hmm. of people are trying to compare him to that. He, he's not on that same level. He's not a, uh, a, a can't-miss first-round type of guy like starling was viewed, and so I think it will kind of remain to be seen, and it will probably be one of those you know, things that you'll need to watch the draft even a little more closely for him than you did a couple years ago for starling because – where he gets drafted probably dictates, you know, if he ends up at the college level. If he if he's a, a late round guy, if, if schools feel that, or if if teams feel that he's really interested in football, I think he's going to fall a little bit in the draft. But uh, from from the, the baseball people that I have talked to, they, they they said he's a pretty solid prospect. Probably not a guy that you're going to necessarily see in that first round, which I think bodes well for Nebraska. If he shows up, though and stays in Lincoln, I think he probably ends up being a better baseball prospect down the road than a football player. When looking on the field, on the football field for Monte Harrison, what what comes to mind when you watch him play? What does his game entail? Just a pure athlete, I mean, a 40-inch vertical. He's got a, a 4-5-40. Uh, he's a guy that I think, too, you look at him, he's still somewhat raw, and he shows up to these combines and he wins MVP honors and whatnot, but I think it's a situation where he's kind of spread so thin at the moment. Uh, he's a he's a very good basketball player as well. He plays point guard uh, for his high school team. And so I think he's a guy that once he gets a little more time to focus on one or two sports, it, you know, the sky's the limit. I think he could really blossom. And I think, uh, I think Nebraska is a good situation for him because in the past they've shown that they are able to balance – those two sport athletes may be a little bit better than some schools or are at least willing to try to, to balance those schedules a little bit better than other schools. Talking with Josh Harvey of Fox Sports Next and Big Red Report. Uh, Josh, you talk about the tri-sport athlete in Monte Harrison. There's kind of two schools of thought there. You know, if you stick to one, you become more polished. But the other one, then you, you know, you're exercising different muscles. You become a better athlete and a better all-around athlete. What what do you think? Do you think kids should stick to one sport, or do you like the tri sport athlete? Well, I, I do know that, that from what I've seen over the last couple of years, that more times than not, it, it's it's almost too tough to play two sports. And I think the way college football, especially, is, is so demanding these days, and even college baseball to a you know an extent, just because you know these guys aren't in our school right now. A lot of these college you know Nebraska players are are often summer um, summer leagues and whatnot and still practicing their skills. And so I, I just I think more times than not it's too hard nowadays uh, with the with these guys' 
schedules and, and the way training is ramped up in the off season. Uh, so, I, you know, I would lean more to you know just going to one sport. But for a guy like this, I understand he he's definitely being wooed by on the football field, and he's got you know teams or he's got. You know, reports out there saying that he could possibly be a first-round draft pick. And so if that's the case, I, I can definitely understand not wanting to give up either sport. And to talk about the other guy that decided to commit on July 4th, Freedom Akinmulladun, uh, the tight end from Grandview, Missouri, stands at 6'4", 240. What are your initial uh, initial thoughts regarding Freedom? Well, I like Freedom because I think he, he's a, a – a nice compliment to the tight ends they already have on the roster. Mm -hmm. uh, I think right now you look at Greg Hart, a guy coming in last year, uh, that some of that speed tight end viewed as more of the Kyler Reed type. And then you got a couple guys that are waiting in the rings, like like Sam Cotton, who I, I think are, are are respectable tight ends when it comes to catching the football, but maybe viewed more as that blocking tight end. I think when you look at freedom. Uh, and I'm not going to try and pronounce his last name. Congratulations <laughs> on doing it. Um, I think you look at him, I think he's a little bit better on, on the blocking side of things. But I think really overall he's pretty balanced. And I think he, he's a nice tight end com comparing w what you have on the roster. I, just, I think he kind of gives you a different look at the position compared to some of the other guys. Talking with Josh Harvey of Fox Sports Next and Big Red Report, uh, first and foremost, with Freedom Akin Mulladen, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. I just say it really confidently, so I could be doing it oh, horrifically and have no idea. But when Freedom was asked on this station on Gassies and Stevens of, uh, last week, last Friday, about Barney Cotton, who recruited him, this is what Freedom had to say: That was like one of the most realest dudes I ever met. Now, obviously, being told that you know you're real and that you're trustworthy and that everything Freedom heard from Barney Cotton, he clearly you know believed. How important is that as far as a recruiter goes? I think very important. I think that's why Bo Pelini, you know, tries to sell that every year. And I think you see more and more recruits and commits in the class mention that every, every, every year. And I think Bo even goes out of his way to make sure that that's kind of a, a storyline in the media that they, they're really honest with guys. They don't make these fake promises. And, and people want to get on the fact that there's been transfers over the last couple of years, but there's transfers everywhere. And oh, I'll, yeah. I'll bet you, I don't have the data, you know, right now to support this claim, but I'll bet you there's, there's Nebraska is on the lower end of, of transfers when you're comparing to the major D1 programs. And I think in large part it's because Nebraska doesn't have those false promises. They don't, they don't claim a guy's going to be starting his freshman year. They're open with guys about possibly moving them to a different position down the road. And every year we hear commitments say, you know, I really felt like Nebraska out of everybody was, was the most honest and it was the most straightforward. And I think that's, you know, over, the, over time, not only do players hear that and understand that, but I think high school coaches get a feeling for that as well. And if that's the case, those high school coaches are encouraging their players, you know, hey, Nebraska, they're, they're not going to, they're not going to sell you, on something that's not true. And so I, I think overall it really bodes well and, and good for the program. Talking with Josh Harvey of Fox Sports Next and Big Red Report to talk a little bit about the player that left the defensive back out of Texas, Jason Hall. He decides to decommit. Is that something you were shocked by in any way? Oh, no, not whatsoever. Anytime a kid commits before visiting a school, I'm never shocked if a decommitment happens. we got to remember that he's never visited Lincoln, and so – uh, it's going to be a situation where I think Nebraska will continue to try and recruit him. I don't think fans should necessarily write him off right away. I, I do honestly believe that uh, he's you know, really considering all options right now. People want to say, well, he's a heavy Texas lean. He might be somewhat of a Texas lean, but I think if he was heavy, he would have pulled the trigger right away, especially the way Texas is and how they're classing you know, traditionally over the last couple of years fills up so quickly. I, I would think that he would want to make sure to secure that spot considering that he's not a probably a top five guy at his position, a guy that they might wait for. And so I think Nebraska still in it here. I, I think there's a chance to get him in on a visit. Obviously he has some good relationships. He felt like Nebraska was the school for him for a really long time. And so I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we're, we're reporting in September or August or September or October that he's coming in for an official visit. 
Now, Josh, with that in mind, how important is it for Nebraska to get athletes and get guys to beef up this team uh, in the secondary in the 2014 class? Well, I think it's very important. I think, like I said before, you mentioned the depth, and it's going to take a major hit towards the end of the season when, when you guys you got guys like Seontay Evans and Stanley Jean Baptiste leaving and even even a couple facies, you know, approach their, their senior year uh, next year. You, you don't you don't want to have to rely necessarily on on freshmen playing right off the bat. And so I think it's important for Nebraska to get some get some, you know, quality guys in this class and, and give them a year or two to, to kind of get ready and get their feet wet on special teams before you throw them out there in the fire. Uh, we've heard, too, that Bo's secondary, it, it maybe takes a little bit longer to, to pick up compared to the average team. So I think it's really important for them to kind of beef up the secondary. Uh, with Hall B commitment, I, I, I would expect them to still take probably three corners uh, in the class. They already have Trey Mosley locked in. I would expect three more, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if they went after another safety as well. I think over the next couple months you're going to see the secondary be probably the biggest point of uh, of need and, and the biggest point that coaches try to address talking with josh harvey of uh fox sports next and big red report uh josh talking about a guy that committed a while ago tanner farmer been hearing some buzz about him at camps and him uh showing some progress what, what have you been hearing about tanner well tanner went out to the opening uh last week uh before the fourth of july it's probably turned into the biggest uh, combine uh, a chance for, for scouts and evaluators to, to kind of get to look at the best talent across the country. It's held out in Oregon, and, and Tanner went out there, and I know the first day he, he let the, the place on fire, didn't lose a one, one-on-one. I know the second day he, he did pretty well as well. I'm not for sure how he ended things. I went on vacation and haven't talked to any scouts that were out there since then, but I know the first couple of days he was really impressive, and us too from some of our scouts that he might have been one of the top you know two or three guards out there and that bodes well for a guy who right now sits at number 50 i think his position on our rankings i've been told by multiple people that got to lay eyes on him the first and second day that he's a guy that's definitely going to climb the rankings i will not be surprised if he's a four-star player down the road just a couple months ago he showed up to his first combine uh with no offers and then really kind of impressed things and, and got the, the ball going there. And, and now he's, you know, he's becoming one of the – viewed as one of the top offensive linemen in the Midwest. And I think if he had probably held off on his commitment, he's a guy that you would have seen even more programs jump on. So it, it's a really great job by Nebraska to kind of jump on him early. Uh, and talking about Tanner Farmer, offensive lineman, uh, commit 6'4", 300 pounds out of Highland, Illinois. Now, now that Tanner – has committed he's still going to these camps any chance that another team kind of swoops in another school comes in and gets him to decommit no 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 not at all i have talked to his dad and i talked to his dad when he was in lincoln i talked to his dad on the phone his dad's not gonna let that happen and (laughs) and tanner really did tanner really did his uh he did a really nice job of making sure he visited so many schools to kind of get an, an idea of where he wanted to go and when they were in Lincoln, they were they were blown away. And and Tanner, his dad didn't even want him to commit when he was here. He wanted him to go home, think about it a little bit, and, you know, take his time. And Tanner was like, "No, this is where I got to be." And and his dad, you know, told him, "You got to be like, this is it. You got to be sure this is where you want to go." And Tanner was sure. If I looked at the class right now, maybe besides Drew Brown because of his past connections, mm-hmm. I don't think uh, there's. There's probably nobody on the list that I would think would decommit before Tanner. Maybe you, you look at a Luke Gifford, but any guys that are not in state, I would say Tanner Farmer's locked in more than any of those guys. I would I would be very shocked if he if he opened things up or was even rumored down the road to be looking elsewhere. He's Josh Harvey of Fox Sports Next and Big Red Report. Josh, thanks a lot for hopping on with me, man. I appreciate it. Hey, not a problem, guys. Talk to you later. You can hear that entire interview with Josh at theticketfm.com after the show. Interesting thing there about Tanner Farmer. I didn't know that. I didn't know that he was that committed to Nebraska, that he, that his dad. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I can I can hear my dad. I'm, just, I'm sure a lot of other people can say, no, 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 this is it. This is it now. Can't go back on this. If you make the commitment, you make the commitment. I mean, I don't know. I can just I can hear it. So Tanner Farmer, the fact that he uh, 
he is that committed is good because he's causing a lot of buzz at a lot of different camps. It's really interesting, and it's an offensive lineman. I mean, look, Nebraska needs offensive linemen. You have all these weapons, and Tim Beck's offense is going to maximize all these weapons. That's great. But if you have a great offensive line, well, now you don't have your quarterback running for his life. You don't have the negative plays that happen when the when the O-line gets pushed back into somebody. The offensive line is so important right now, and it's so important to get guys like DJ Foster and Tanner Farmer that it's really nice to hear. Speaking of guys you want to lock in, Jared Allen. He might be working on a contract with the Vikings. He was asked about it earlier today on NFL AM. Talk about what he had to say next. This is Drop the Mic.